All right, welcome back. So what we want to talk about today is finite state machines uh, for picks. So we've kind of learned how to make a finite state machine, um, how to pick the numbers in it to like prepare you for a PLC. Um, that skill is great and useful for a lab, but for your projects, you might, you don't have to, but you might choose to use a finite state machine and that code is gonna be for a pick. And we wanted to show you how you could do that, right? So today's gonna to be a little brutal because it's gonna be fast, right? I don't want the video to take two hours. We're gonna pick a project, it's so like an entire like project, and we're gonna make a finite state machine and then we're gonna implement it in C code all in one video, it's gonna be great. Uh, the project we're gonna pick is gonna be simple. Uh, it's gonna be a two player game and we're gonna do it on the green board. It's gonna keep track of the score for two players up to 15. The first player's score is going to be on the left LEDs, so 0 through 3, and then the player 2's score is going to be on the other side, which is 4 through 7. Uh, we're going to keep track in binary, and the game's going to be played up till 15. We've picked some rules for the finite state machine. We're going to say that there are four states in this finite state machine. Uh, there's like a, a game ready state, so it's nobody's turn yet, but the game is reset and kind of ready to go. Um, there's going to be player one's turn where you can increment his score, player two's turn where you can in in increment their score, and then a game over which happens once somebody hits 15. I've picked different inputs. Um, I've said that RB0 is going to increment the score, so depending on whose turn it is, RB0 is going to increment that score. RB1 and RB2 are going to switch whose turn it is, so if you press RB1, it's player one's turn. If you press RB2, it's player 2's turn, so that should make sense. And then if you press RB3, doesn't matter where you at, it resets the game. We're implementing the finite state machine, um, so I've made it for you already. I'm not going to go through it in great detail, but it implements what I just said. Uh, you can see things like anywhere, if you press RB3, you come back to the ready state. You can see I'm using things for a pick like instead of like I1, I2, I3, I'm saying like RB3 and stuff. If you press RB1, it goes into player 1's turn. If you press RB2, it shoots over to player 2's. You actually can shoot back to player 1, so player 1 has to go first, uh, but then you can come back and forth as much as you need. It is a melee machine uh, because the action um, RB0 depends on what state it's in, so it's a combination of inputs um, and the state. Uh, to see what action takes place there, because it increments the appropriate score, uh, you know, player one or player two, depending on where you're at. The other action, of course, is that the reset game resets the score. And then if somebody gets to 15, uh, then it goes into game over. So that's the plan. Before we start with the finite state machine, there's some setup work we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do some basic setup work to where the lights show the player score, um, and also where RB0 interrupts are set up. But there's just some prep work, right? Let's do the prep work first, then we'll come back to the finite state machine. So go ahead and fire up uh, MPLABX. Uh, I've got my green board connected already. Create a new project. Um, I'm just going to do things quickly, right? So a recently used device is selected to the 18F4520. I'm going to select my pit kit because it's already connected. I would like for you to follow along and actually do these things, so make sure you pause as needed to do these steps. Uh, I don't know, you can call it uh, two-player finite state machine. Uh, once you've got a project, you want to do a new template with interrupts, because we need interrupts for our RB0 interrupts, uh, and we'll just call it uh, two-player finite state machine. I chose to use interrupts because I want to make sure that I'm counting edges uh, on the RB0 presses. The RB1 and RB2, I don't care because if you press it, um, it goes to that state and it just stays there if you kept pressing it. So I don't care about the edges there. But for RB0 to increment score, I've got to be really careful about my presses. So I'm going to do some of these things quickly, right? Um, I happen to know that I'm going to need delays.h because I want to use debounce. Uh, I happen to know that I'm going to use port b.h because I'm going to use interrupts. Uh, as far as constants go, I pretty much always use this press to zero constant. 
as far as functions go, I'm not going to make any functions. Uh, I'm going to choose to blow away the sample function even. You can leave it. It does no harm, but I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, as far as variables go, I'm going to make a player one score uh, and also a player two score. You can technically put those on one line, but to be honest, I usually just put them on two lines. Those are going to be the variables that track who's, who's scored um, and how much they've scored. Uh, inside the setup area, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't usually memorize a lot of this stuff, but I mean, I happen to know some of them. Um, so I want the command to open up RB0 interrupts. Um, I want to say um, interrupts are on. I want to say falling edge. Uh, I want to say pull ups are off. Um, there's that one. I happen to know enough of that one that I could type it. This turns on port B interrupts. Uh, so I'm going to have to go write some things for that. I also want to have the scores get displayed on the LCDs, or sorry, LEDs. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to be a little tricky, right? So I'm going to put player two score on the top, uh, and then I'm going to put uh, player one score on the, the bottom four. This little bit shift says, hey, take their score and shift it up to the top four bits, um, and then put player one score, you know, in the default place, which is the bottom four bits. So that's going to display the LCDs are going to display the score for me. Pretty easy. I'm trying to keep it simple, right? Uh, the interrupt will be a little harder, right? So we're going to have to say int con bits, um, and then we need the flag, right? What is the flag? INT zero IF. Uh, if we have it go off, uh, we're going to need a way to reset it. Um, so we'll say set the flag to zero. Since I want to do debounce, I'm actually going to do a delay first. Again, you're going to have to pause the video, but I, I just kind of want to get it done quickly. I've done the math with a four, k, 4 megahertz clock all the time, and I know that if I say delay 1K TCYX, it's going to be milliseconds. 30 milliseconds is a reasonable debounce. If you go back and watch that video, you'll see all those details uh, explained quite nicely. Here, we're just going to make it happen. After 30 milliseconds, I just want to make sure it's still pressed. If it is, I'm going to do something. Eventually, I'm going to look at what state it is and make a smart choice. Um, but for testing only, uh, I'm just going to increment score one, right? And so I just want to see does this actually do anything useful? Uh, do presses on this actually show up on the LEDs? Um, so I'm going to run it. I'm going to say never show this message again because I don't care about you. And I'm going to see if my like preparation work uh, was good or not. So right now if I press RB0, uh, it looks like the lights are going. And it's counting in binary. There's seven. Uh, then there's eight. Um, looks like it's working. There's nothing to stop it right now at 15, so it'll just keep on counting. Uh, there it's at 32, right? There was no cap, but I was just testing. All right, prep work done. Let's actually implement a finite state machine. So in order to make a finite state machine, we're going to have to make pound defines for each state, and there's going to have to be some variable that tracks the state. Um, you can look at your notes, and you can kind of see here's the code that we already added. So the new code that we're adding is pound defines for the different states and a variable to track it. So let's go ahead and add those things. So I'm going to go ahead to my pound defines area and I'm going to add some new pound defines. I'm going to choose to start them all with the word state underscore. I like to do that because it makes code completion easier. So we've got the ready state, which we said was zero. Uh, we've got a player one turn, which I'll just shorten. I'll just call player one. A uh, player two's turn, uh, and then a game over, which will be three. So those are the three poss four possible states. We also need a variable to track them. So this is just going to track the current state. I'm going to go and implement my first arrow and say on reset, go to the ready state. So there we've implemented one arrow. So much like we did with a finite state machine, we're just going to go around 
uh, and we're going to pick arrows to implement. So we're going to start implementing arrows. First one I'm going to pick is all those uh, resets. This one's actually easy because it doesn't care what state you're in. Um, if you see that RB3 is pressed, then what I want you to do is I want you to set the state to be the ready state. That was easy. Um, and then, like I say, order doesn't really matter on these. If I'm in the ready state, so if I'm in the ready state, then one of the things that it does, I'm going to implement its two actions. I'm going to say that player one score is zero and player two score is zero. Great. So now I've done, uh, done a couple arrows, uh, done one of the actions that's inside a state. Let's start doing some more arrows. One way you could approach it is you could also like, you know, just do some prep work, right? So I know that I'm going to have different states. Um, and you know, you could just go through for each one and say, hey, if I'm in the ready state, I know something's going to have to happen. Uh, if I'm in a different state, I know something else is going to have to happen. Uh, and you could just kind of make them all. I happen to know that game over's only exit was uh, this one right here, so it's already done, so I'm not going to make a section for that. But I just kind of made some placeholder scaffolding to where I can put things in. The arrow that's coming out of the ready state is that I might go, if I see a port B bits uh, RB1 get pressed, um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch states to the player one state. In a very similar way, if I'm in, so there's one arrow done, right? So just going around getting arrows. If I see an RB2, uh, then I'm going to go to RB or player two state. Um, and so that was if I was in player one, I might do that. For player two, what I might do is if I'm in player two and I see an RB1, um, then I go to player one state. This could be combined, it could be shortened. I'm really not worried about the combining and the shortening. Like, obviously these two did the same thing, so I could have combined them in clever ways. I'm not worried about it. I really just want to say, hey, I've implemented this arrow, this arrow, this arrow. I'm just kind of working my way around implementing different arrows. The only two arrows I have left to implement are the um, score being 15 going to the end game, and also the incrementing of the scores, right? Probably ought to increment scores as well. I'm going to choose to do that down inside my interrupt. So inside my interrupt, I'm going to say, hey, state, if you are equal to player one's turn, then increment player one's score. And this is no longer testing. This is now a real deal. Um, and then if you're in, I'm going to do an else if. If the state is equal to uh, player two's turn, then what I want you to do is I want you to increment player two's score. So that it implements the two actions in those states. So depending on what state I'm in, so it's a melee machine, uh, increment the appropriate score. And then these last arrows are easy as well. We'll just say if he's 15 uh, or if he is 15, Again, you're going to have to pause to, uh, to, to get caught up, but I'm going to, you have the ability to pause, so I'm just going to do it quickly. If either one of those guys is 15, go into the game over state. The states are nice because once I'm in the game over state, nobody can increment the score anymore, right? So it's in the game over state, um, and you don't have to worry about any more scores uh, getting incremented. Uh, so let's go see if I've done anything useful, uh, and then we'll kind of reflect on it. So I start off in the ready state, so if I press RB0, nothing happens. If I press RB1, uh, you can think about what state that just put me into. Um, now presses to RB0, actually like increment player one score. So there is a three, four, five. If I switch over to player two, so I hit RB2, uh, then I can increment his score. So there's one, two, three. He comes up from the bottom, but that's just the positioning of where the LEDs were at. So right now the score is, you know, five to three. Let's take it up to five to five. Go back to player one by hitting RB1. You can see he's nearly there. Go back to RB player two, take him up. I'm gonna let player two win. Uh, so right now he's at 14. If I press it one more time, he goes to 15. Uh, now he's one. 
Um, there's no display on the screen, but I'm in the game over state. And from the game over state, you know, you can't, pressing RB0 does nothing, pressing RB1 does nothing, pressing RB2 does nothing. The only way to get out of it is to press RB3, uh, and that'll take you back to the ready state. From the ready state, you know, you can't score until you press RB1, uh, and then the game continues. All right, so that was kind of your whirlwind uh, introduction to using a pick to implement a finite state machine. The real trick was right here, right? So making pound defines, making a state, um, and then you have a lot of decisions for like what you do depending on how that state variable is currently set. Uh, and with all these uh, little nuances, uh, you are able to implement this finite state machine. All right, so the first one we did together, we did it fast. Uh, next, we'll show you uh, another problem with a lock uh, where you're going to do a little bit more on your own. All right, see you then. Bye.